In the remake of the movie Wall Street, there's a scene where a Wall Street executive is asked the question, what is your number? How much would it take for you to just walk away? He turns, looks right back at him, and says simply, more. Now, this is kind of a crazy statement to me. You know, this movie's all about greed, so, you know, pretty greedy answer. But this is a really good question, and this is what retirement boils down to, is what is your number? What's going to make you happy in retirement? In order to get there, we really need to answer two questions. The first question comes from what mindset you're in. And there's really three different types of mindset. The first one is going to be simple. A simple mindset is a person or couple who only needs to pay their bills. They'd rather enjoy a few extra years of not working than saving up so that they can do something in retirement that other people may find more fulfilling. The second mindset is going to be modest. And this is probably where most people fall. This is going to be the person that not only pays their bills, but also wants to go on that vacation or maybe play golf once a week. The third mindset is going to be excessive. And this can come from a few different angles. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're greedy. Maybe you love your job and you get paid a lot and you just find fulfillment in doing it. So you continue working and you save up a ton of money and there's really no need to retire. The other person maybe is driven by greed and that extravagance that they have grown to, you know, grown accustomed to. And then the other possibility is that they just never really thought about retiring. So they just continue excessively saving and not going through these exercises and asking the question if they're ready to retire. Now that you figured out what mindset you fall into, we need to figure out how much is enough to get you to that lifestyle that you want. So we really need to work backwards and a good place to start is going to our website, downloading our expense worksheet. I'll provide the link in the summary of the video and start listing out all your expenses and what you want to spend in retirement. The second piece is going to be protection. And so one really common example is gonna be long-term care. I'll, I'll provide a link in the summary again uh, from a study done by Genworth that will show you how much you can expect a long-term care event to cost in your specific state and county. They've been doing this study for a while, so they have some pretty good data there if you want to go punch in and see what it would cost to live in a nursing facility for two or three years. Now, the protection bucket can come from a, a few other things. It's kind of what you're concerned about. So maybe you're concerned about a really bad stock market while you retire or right before you retire. Or maybe you're really concerned about inflation running away. Um, there's, there's many other things that you yourself can be concerned about. Maybe you live in fire country and you wanna make sure in case something tragic does happen and your house burns down, that you're still able to survive that and continue to live that retirement that you want to live. So protection can really be anything. It really is what you are concerned about. Number three is legacy. And this is going to be any money that's left to your kids or maybe a charity that you're passionate about. Now, a lot of people just say, whatever's left is left. I'm not gonna work any extra years so I can make sure my kids have a little extra money. And that's totally up to you. Make sure you just consider that when we are pulling this all together. So now let's take a look at an example that brings both of these questions together to find your number. So you've already figured out your mindset and now you've figured out your expenses, you've figured out how much money you want to set aside for protection and how much you want to set aside for legacy if you want to do so. So let's pull this all together and just put together an example. So let's say that your basic living expenses are $85,000 and you also want to go on an annual trip which is going to cost you about $15,000. So that means you have $100,000 of expenses that you have each year. And on top of that, you have social security coming in of let's say 50,000. So each year there's a $50,000 need. Now there is inflation you have to concern yourself with and you kind of need detailed, re detailed retirement planning software in order to figure that out. But let's keep things simple here. So you need $50,000 
And in order to receive that, you're gonna be pulling that from the money that you save, right? Both retirement and uh, brokerage investment accounts, okay? So if we use a 5% withdrawal rate, um, a lot of times you're gonna hear 4%. I think on average about five is, is okay. Um, you're not being too aggressive, but you're not being too conservative either. So let's just use 5%. That would mean you would need a million dollars saved up. Now, granted, this is talking about tax-free money, right? So if it's in some type of 401k or IRA, you're going to have to account for taxes. So that may be a little bit more. But now you're looking that your basic needs for living expenses is a million dollars, right? That's the first part of it. Now let's add on to it long-term care. And let's say the state uh, where you live in the county you, you want to plan for at least, you know, a year, let's say two years for you and your spouse, and that comes out to $150,000. All right, so we're going to keep that piece as well. And then for the legacy piece, you can either put a zero there, or maybe you say, I just want to make sure that my kids receive $300,000, right? There's three kids. I want them each to receive at least $100,000, and if they receive more, great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that million, that 150,000 and that 300,000, now we're at $1,450,000 and that is going to be your number. So when, when you look at pulling that number and finding out what it is that you need saved, there are more details that you need to take into account, like I said, inflation and taxes, but this is a really good place to get there, right? You need to know the mindset and then once you have figured that out, then you go and figure out your number. I'm John Gregg, your certified financial planner with APSAdvisor.com. I'll see you in the next video.